Assalamualaikum and hello. My name is Shahada Abdul Rashid. Welcome to the Philadelphia Muslim Oral History Project. This series is a part of In the Path of Islam, a project brought to you by the Free Library of Philadelphia and funded by the Doris Duke Foundation for Islamic Art. This series and project shares and uplifts the voices of Muslims indigenous to Philadelphia and the Delaware Valley. These personal accounts that you're about to hear are unique, probably not written down, and important to be passed on for future generations. Inshallah, God willing, you will enjoy these stories as told by the people who have experienced them. Thank you, and may you be blessed with goodness always. Hello, my name is Shafika Muhammad. As an African-American female born and raised in the city of Philadelphia, I began my spiritual journey at three years old as a Baptist Christian. I went to Sunday school, Bible school, and sang on the choir every week and attended summer camp. During these early years, I started memorizing and reciting the books of the Bible. By the age of five years old, I was rewarded for being able to recite all the books of the Bible in order. Most Sundays, I would go to Sunday school in the morning, afternoon service in the afternoon, and in the evening, visit my uncle's church service, where my uncles and cousins were deacons and eventually became ministers. My father was a deacon and became a minister at another church. This pattern continued until I was around the age of 18 years old. During my teenage years, there was a lot of revolutionary physical, mental, and spiritual action going on in the environment in the city of Philadelphia. At the time, there was still a lot of prejudice and segregation in the city of Philadelphia. Martin Luther King was marching, Malcolm X was fighting, Black Panthers were educating. Reverend Leon Sullivan at Zion Baptist Church at that time where I was attending had gathered his congregation to boycott Tasty Cake because they hired no Blacks and provided no Black store owners with their products to sell. Sit-ins took place in Sunray Ranch Room Restaurant and Woolworth's lunch counters because Blacks were not allowed to eat in their establishments. Colleges were not letting African Americans attend until affirmative action was passed. Police were stripping teenage African American males in the streets. And then you had the happenings in Vietnam, which was not being called the war when Philadelphia's young African American soldiers were coming home in body bags. More than 50 from Edison High School and 50 from Gratz High School. Many of my friends, after listening to Malcolm X of the Nation of Islam, found his speeches to be verifying with what was happening in their environment, and they were inspired to start going to the temple. I was a person who wanted to understand and know more about Islam and therefore started going to the temple. At that time, the stress was on disciplining yourself and unity. We listened to lectures for hours, had cooking and sewing classes, drilled and learned about security. This was not new for me. I had been doing these things all of my life. I went from makeup, mini skirts and frosted blonde hair to a modest dress of no makeup, loose long clothing and covering for my hair. It was an amazing time because my father complained about my style of dress and hair before I became a Muslim. But once I converted, he complained about my Muslim style of dress. I was no longer eating pork at family dinners, which disturbed my family members. 
For more than a year, when I entered my father's home, he would go upstairs to his room, slamming the bedroom door and not coming out until I was gone. One of the things that was puzzling to me was the Quran was told to be put on a high place and was not to be touched because it was special. The nation of Islam was also continually going through changes. At times, I didn't know if I were in the right place. When the death of Elijah Muhammad, his son, Warth D. Muhammad, guided the community to start reading the Quran. Now, back when I was around six years old in Sunday school, I used to get in trouble. I used to ask the teacher, when was Jesus the Father? When was he the Son? And when was he the Holy Ghost? My teacher would never answer me. One day he asked me why I wanted to know. I told him that I wanted to pray to him when he was God. I was told never to ask this question again. When I start reading the Quran during the time of Warfi Muhammad, in Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, it said, He is Allah, the only, the one and only Allah, the eternal, the absolute. He begetteth not, nor is he begotten. And there is none like unto him. And in Surah Mukmin, verse 91, it says, Allah has not taken any son, nor has there ever been with him any deity. After more than 20 years, I finally received my answer. I knew I was on the right path. I have taken my skills learned in my pre-Islamic days and have been working on establishing Islam in my life and passing it on to others. All praises be to Allah. I have been on this journey. Allah has blessed me to be a teacher, both academic and Islamic, work with children and adults in various settings, cook, clean, build, do security, and host events and assist in establishing Islamic institutions and a member of the Jewels of Islam for 25 years. I have been blessed to see at least four generations of youth become doctors, lawyers, teachers, politicians, scholars, accountants, builders, masters of trades, and many, many other professions while establishing their families and still practicing Islam and passing it on to their children. I would like to be remembered as one who struggled to establish Islam in my life and my community and shared and passed it on to others for the sake of Allah. Once again, this is Shafiqa Muhammad.